Okay, this is the last slide which I ended the previous session. So we will continue uh, Buddha Paridimana. So what happened next? So Buddha proceeded further to this uh, town called Pava. At this place, at this place, uh, Buddha was served with the delicacy meal. This meal in Pali is called Sukha Madhava by this Chunda. Chunda is a blacksmith. It's the one that served Buddha the last meal. So this kind of event you need to remember. So there are many scholars debate whether this was a meal, was a, was a meat of a pig, a cow, or a mushroom, or soft boiled rice with five products of a cow. So the Pali term, this one, uh, no scholar able to give you a definite answer. So all these are so-called uh, their own interpretation of this meal, this last meal. So it could mean a kind of excerpt of life. So nobody know the exact food that's recorded during that time. So we have just to take uh, presumption from these various writers. Okay. So Buddha knew that his day is coming. So he, Buddha asked the male uh, only to serve him solely for it. Just he himself to take this particular uh, meal, last meal. So he was, I don't know what's the reason behind, but many say that Buddha uh, was fearful that this may also hurt others. So best is to not to make more uh, what I call events happening. Lah. So just because it's last meal, so this chunda may be blamed if many person get sick of it. So the rest of the meal uh, after serving to Buddha was not served to the Sangha members. But instruction is to bury the leftovers. So by doing this, great merits uh, attained by this uh, chunda to serve Buddha last meal. So all these particular events come because of a reason. So chunda got his merit for serving Buddha the last meal. So after the meal, uh, Buddha was attacked by a severe illness. I mean, sort of diarrhea, very severe one. And the text mentioned bloody diarrhea with sharp pain. They are doing the kind of the the tree as a decent tree, right? Having back stomach and always go to the toilet. So Buddha, with his kind of mentality, he able to control his physical suffering. So after the meal, he carry on with journey to this place called Kusinala, which he selected for his final. Emancipation. So Buddha and his retinue, uh, upon reaching this place called Kusinala, Venerable Ananda prepared a coach, I mean, a place for him to sleep between a uh, twin sala tree of Malas at this Malas sala grove. If you have no idea of Sala, you can come across this tree uh, where food are bare like cannonball and the flower is very, very fragrant. If you ever got a chance to see Malaysia, uh, then you can see those big, big uh, trees uh, with big, like coconut like that, but it's not coconut. Uh. So before it bears fruit, the, the, the fragrance of this flower is very good smelling. So if you see, because that is called the salad tree. So with the Buddha's head uh, towards the northern side and the other side to the south the lake, Buddha 
recline on the coach on the right side. I mean, sleeping on one side. So at this particular place, our Buddha mentioned four places with his life should be visited and venerated by lay Buddhists. Uh, this was told to the audience of monks. So when you, I mean, ask, I mean, telling the devotees in the future that these four places where Buddha started his enlightenment until his uh, passing away is a necessity for every Buddhist if got a chance to visit these four places in India. Okay, I don't know you all visited, but uh, everybody, every Buddhist, uh, got a chance to visit India. Uh, try to visit all these four places. So, first place is where Buddha's place of birth at Lumini Park. Uh, he is down there now already. He knew that particular place, so it's well known. So you go down there, you can find the place. And then the place of enlightenment, Bodhigaya. Uh, that's also another place they, they, they are supposed that Buddha was down there under the Bodhi tree that he attained his enlightenment. So this is also very well known in India also. And then the place of preaching the Dhamma, this particular sutta, Chakka, Bhava Tana Sutta at this sadhana. Okay. So these are the three places if you visit India. Uh, plus the fourth one uh, is a compulsory for you to do a privilege in this life. So the next one is a place of Buddha passing away, Pari Dimana. It's Kusinara. So before Buddha, this is the last message, he passed it to the Sangha. So every Buddhist who has a chance are welcome to visit these four places. He said, if you happen to pass away in this privilege, uh, you'll be born in the celestial realm. Okay? So no harm visiting if you've got a chance. Uh, then, according to the this story written down by the text, Buddha also need to do the last coordination before he his uh, so-called demise. So this wandering ascetic uh, by the name of uh, and he desired to see Buddha but was stopped by Venerable Ananda because Buddha was now under very bad shape. So Ananda scrutinized uh, and prevent those people unnecessarily visiting the Buddha. But our Buddha overheard Subhadas pleading to Ananda and asked Ananda to let him visit him because Buddha already foresee that this will be his last ordination. So upon listening to the admonition, I mean what Buddha spoken to this particular ascetic, uh, Subhada, so ordination and Buddha agreed agreed to it. But Buddha was too weak. So Subhada was ordained by Venerable Ananda in the presence of Buddha. And it was treated as the last ordination by Buddha and was the last person, personal converted. So all these important events you need to remember. Then our Buddha also, he already make up his mind what to say to the audience of this assembly of monk. What are the final things which he's going to say before uh, he left? So Buddha then made his final address to all the Sangha members. During that time, the Dhamma and Vinaya should be the teacher's guidance upon the demise of the Buddha. So Buddha said, upon his passing away, the Dharma and the Vinaya would be your teacher. So there is no appointed uh, chief uh, to take over Buddha after his passing away. So 
the text, Dharma and Vinaya, will be your guidance. And then, uh, Buddha also mentioned this. He given permission to abide these minor rules of the discipline. I mean, he agreed to let the monks uh, to change the minor rules which they find it if irrelevant or of uh, no effect or is a hindrance to the monks to let this monk decide to make minor rules uh, changes. And I don't know this was a good or bad, but after his passing away, many monks uh, make use of this to change many rules uh, what Buddha has given. So especially the other sects, uh, the Mahayana and the uh, Tibetan one. Uh. So it's a blessing for us, the Tevada. None of the monks uh, has this kind of so-called uh, superior wisdom uh, that uh, they can able to uh, change what Buddha's teaching. So none of the discipline rules uh, have been have been changed since the first Buddhist council. So all the rules are uh, 227 uh, and 311 for the nun uh, still remain until today. Then our Buddha uh, also keep reminding the final message. So to raise any doubt regarding Buddha teaching uh, of the order to get it clarified. Uh, Buddha also said, whatever words uh, upon this uh, Buddha passing away, uh, these are uh, things you need for the monks and also for the lay people and those who are learning it to check against it. So after two repetitions of repeating this to the final monks, all of them are uh, remaining silent. Okay? So anything that are uh, they are not clear about the Buddha teaching. He, he asked a big big audience of the monk to bring out any question, but none of the monk uh, uh, respond. So he also said about what the remains of his body. So on the question of treating the body of the Buddha upon his demise, means his great passing away, uh, so Buddha replied to the Sangha, should concern themselves with their exertion towards the arahanship. He asked the monk, the Buddha body is of insignificant importance to you monks. Your monks, uh, your job is to attain arahanship as soon as possible. So the, the remains of the body of the monk, of the Buddha, is very insignificant to you people. So, the release according to them, uh, to Buddha, uh, is not important. But until today, uh, more and more people pray veneration to the release all that, which Buddha treat as of insignificant importance. So, Venerable Ananda bring Buddha to honor re the remains like a universal, universal monarch. So, Venerable Ananda suggests that Buddha uh, should be treated like a great king so that people can pay high respect to our Buddha. And Buddha re replied to Ananda, Behold, disciple, I have taught you sub the subject to chain are all component things and strive with diligence. I say, Buddha said, every body, uh, including he himself, his body, also like a living house, uh, come to a certain age when aging, the breakdown of his whole body is a reality that everything has to be changed. Okay? So we can't prevent it, nor no, uh, what you call, worry about this or cry upon this or whatever. So important thing is to get yourself enlightened. That's the most important thing. The body to him, is of insignificant importance. But the trouble is that until today, the relics still play a very important significant role among all Buddhist countries. 
So upon passing away of the Buddha was unique. As Buddha was in a state of ecstasy. I mean, he is now in that higher state of what we call ecstasy and kind of uh, meditation state. And progressing rose towards reaching Sana Vinanos Niroda. I mean, the final liberation from his body. So he attained the what the first ecstasy again, and Buddha rose to the fourth ecstasy and passed away in the ecstasy. So this is called the jan kind of more higher than jhana state. This is a kind of you getting out yourself towards timbana. So you must attain the first, second, and fourth state. And then you reach the fourth state, you are released from your body and you attain Dibbana. So according to the chronology of Mimbansa, this is the text written in Sri Lanka. It stated that the passing away date was 543 BC. And then recent re historical research stated as 483 BC. So whichever date is it, uh, is of of what controversy? Uh. So even the Mahayana has a date earlier than our Theravada one. So important, it's not that important to us uh, of argument uh, who is right, who is wrong. But important is that Buddha wants you to learn his teaching and get liberation, liberated like him. So the remains of the Lord Buddha was divided this by this Brahmin Donna. So all these things come in place one after another. Because among the Sangha, nobody was in appropriate position to do this distribution. So at the passing away of this Buddha, this Brahmin Dona came in to distribute the re relics uh, equally among all those that are deserved to collect all these relics. So in order to prevent any dispute or fighting between each other. So this relics was distributed in this way. So to the following people. So the, the remains are, uh, actually there are eight portions. They are distributed among all these uh, various uh, kings or monarchs or whatever. So all the states, the various states that are related to Buddha. King Ajasatu, as you know, uh, or Magadha, he got a portion. And then remember the Chavis of Wasali. Uh, this was before our Buddha passed away. Uh, he, he told this King Ajasatu, the minister, uh, he cannot invade this Wasali. Uh, and he, they are part of also the people that support Buddha. And these Chavis also got a portion of it. And then his home people, the Sakyana of Kapi Vatu, also got a portion of it. And then the bullies of Ala Kapa and the Koliyas of this Rama Gama. And so the Brahmins of this Veta Dipa and the Malas of Pava and the Malas of Kusinara. So all these eight, all the whatever states people uh, will get a big a portion so there's no infighting between each other and then the embers given to the mosia of this Ipalavana. and then the urn that collect all these uh buddha relics uh, remains uh, are passed to this brahmin donor who collected this urn so Remain distribution, uh, you all need to remember who are the people that has a share in it. Okay, so please remember it. Okay, so with this, you end this Pari Dibana. So go back and revise yourself. Uh. So this is a very important topic, and I find that they'll set most of the questions on here.